We are using this technique that is called transcranial magnetic stimulation that uh, is able to investigate the mechanism of uh, uh, cortical function and dysfunction. So it depends w which patient or subject you're going to study, if the healthy people or the demented people as uh, we study. We study especially Alzheimer's disease patient. And so with this kind of measure, we can uh, investigate it, especially the mechanism of cortical plasticity that we know are impaired uh, by the animal models where they make uh, electrophysiological studies on the hippocampus lice and uh, with this kind of uh, stimulation they give you long-term potentiation, long-term depression, cortical uh, mechanism. We, with, this, trans with the transcranial material stimulation we can investigate this, the same mechanism on men and uh, we are the first to study this kind of mechanism in, in directly in patient and we interestingly replied the uh, same animal data and so w with this specific work uh, uh, we want to see if this um, uh, measure can be a biomarker especially for uh, uh, dividing the patients from healthy, uh, healthy subject and especially if it can be a biomarker of clinical progression because you know now in the Alzheimer's disease um, management uh, physician want to see, want to find this new kind of biomarker and nowadays we have all invasive kind of biomarkers such as lumbar puncture or very uh, expensive such as the amyloid or the new tr tau trackers and uh, in this really preliminary study where we have a 60, 80 patient and 30 healthy subject we saw that RTP measurements and especially the impairment of RTP mechanism is uh, a good uh, measure not just to differentiate Alzheimer this patient from healthy subject, this is normal, you can measure also from the, with the clinical setting, but especially to see if this patient will uh, have a progression, uh, a worse progression uh, related to other kind of patients. So uh, we have a really interesting results and we hope to increase our sample to have uh, uh, strongest data. The impact is that uh, for sure we have to improve our, our sample and, um, and uh, we want also to integrate with MRI techniques to see if, uh, if there is a match also of uh, anatomical tracking, you know. And uh, the next step uh, will be also to um, increase not just the patient sample, also the healthy subject sample. And, uh, you know, if, if we have uh, more uh, reliable, consistent data, it really can be applied to um, a wide range of patients to see the um, the pred to predict, to try to predict the, the disease and uh, for sure it can be also useful for example in pharmacological trials with this measurement they can change after some trial can improve or can also uh, decrease so uh, it can be a good indicator.